from the WMTV studios, NBC 15 News at 9 on Madison CW starts now. You start with a live look downtown toward the Capitol. As you can see, the roads glistening from the rain. I'm George Belecci. Let's get right to Brian Dugues in the First Alert Center. You'll want to keep that rain gear handy this week, right, Brian? Yeah, George, we talked about this. Vaccine tracker. Right now, more than one in four people in our state have had at least one dose of a COVID-19 shot. 15% are now fully vaccinated. That number represents 874,000 Wisconsinites. If we take a closer look at vaccinations by race, 17% of American Indians in Wisconsin have started their series. That's down 18 percentage points compared to the statewide level. NBC 15's Michelle Beck is taking a closer look at the rollout for our local tribes. Michelle, you got answers from two different nations. We are waiting to get an itinerary. I'm the newsroom, Michelle Beck, NBC 15 News. Michelle, thank you. Now, a new state law gives dentists the green light to administer COVID-19 shots in Wisconsin. Brittany Ehrman joins us live in the studio. Brittany, this week in Milwaukee, Governor Tony Evers signed the bill into law. That's right, George. Now, Brittany, he also explained this could be a game changer for rural communities. Thank you, Brittany. <laughs> no problem. New tonight, homebound Wisconsinites can now get their shots from home. It's called UW Healthcare Direct. It applies to those who can't leave their house due to medical or physical risks. UW has already vaccinated 180 people in their homes over the last two weeks and expects to help hundreds more get their shots. It's a lot safer. If you or someone you know needs an in-home vaccination, contact your primary care doctor first to see if you qualify. And wrapping up within the hour, UW-Madison is asking the community for input on the future of Library Mall. People weighed in at a virtual community workshop tonight. Campus planners say they're looking to make sure it's an inclusive space. Another workshop will be held May 10th. You can find more info on UW's website. Search Library Mall Redevelopment Study. And right now, police are searching for this man after a shooting in a Madison men's shelter. This is Ronald Stevens. He's wanted for attempted homicide, and authorities say he's considered armed and dangerous. If you see him, call Madison police. Tonight, a memorial grows outside of the King Supers grocery store in Boulder, Colorado, where 10 people were shot and killed just yesterday. The community is still in shock and grieving after tragedy. Took a long walk today and got to see the sun on the flat irons, and I thought, wow. Ten people didn't get to see the sun on the flat irons this morning. The victims rain, range in age from 20 to 65. A Boulder police officer is among the dead. Police say they have the suspect in custody connected to yesterday's shooting. 21-year-old Ahmad Elisa is charged with 10 counts of first-degree murder. Investigators say he walked into a store yesterday afternoon and opened fire. The motive in the killings is still unclear. But on the heels of the deadly shooting spree in Atlanta last week, President Joe Biden is calling for immediate action to prevent further gun violence. I don't need to wait another minute. State Senator Melissa Agard of Madison is also calling for change. In a statement, she writes in part, quote, this is an epidemic and it has to stop. It is time to get serious about creating real change and passing life-saving gun reforms immediately. A referendum question in the Weston School District could decide its future. The district serves families in both Sauk and Richland counties. NBC 15 Sonica Bargo spoke to the district administrator about why voters should vote yes on April 6th. In-person absentee voting is underway in Madison for the spring election. If you plan to vote, bring an acceptable photo ID. And if you moved or need to register to vote, you also need proof of your address like a utility bill. To find your polling place, head to myvote.wi.gov. Cocktails to go. That bill is now headed to Governor Evers' desk after passing the state Senate. It allows bars and restaurants to sell mixed drinks and glasses of wine to go in sealed containers. It passed in the assembly last week. Another bill in the legislature today, mandatory vaccinations. A pair of bills would address whether government officials or employers could mandate a COVID-19 vaccine. That should hit the assembly floor today. Outdated data. U.S. health officials are expressing concerns. AstraZeneca's vaccine study may have used old information to prove the shot's effectiveness. The company is now working with safety regulators to sort out the discrepancy. It is not clear how soon the vaccine will be approved for emergency use. 
The medical examiner confirms the body pulled from a Rock County Lake is that of this missing hiker, 66 year old Kevin Doyle. He first went missing last Wednesday and was found in the lake on Friday. Doyle's two dogs were also found dead. Authorities haven't shared any details on the cause or nature of Doyle's death. A sticky mess in Minnesota, a rail car carrying molasses exploded, spilling molasses all over the tracks and surrounding area. It also caused structural damage to this rail facility you see here. No one was hurt. It's not clear what caused the explosion. And a fisherman pulls a child ashore, stranded on a chunk of ice in the middle of a river. This happened in Ukraine. The fisherman took the hook of his line, cast out to the boy, and reeled him in. A good reminder not to go out onto the ice this time of year. It's not wintry weather we're tracking, but springtime rains. How long it sticks around in your first alert forecast? Low internet? Call the FCC. How your complaints could help secure faster internet for all. And a first in the nation. A Chicago suburb is paying reparations to black families. How much money is at stake and how the program is being funded. Frustrated with your internet connection? Turns out you should just call the FCC. The agency hopes to use this first-hand information to improve the accuracy of its broadband maps. It's hoping with real user feedback it can help improve internet in areas where it's slow. A national first, Evanston, Illinois will pay reparations to its black residents. The $10 million program will use revenue from its marijuana sales tax for housing help. The city council will send $400,000 in reparations to qualifying black residents. Households can get up to $25,000 for things like down payments, home improvement, or mortgage assistance. We're looking forward to getting this out of the way so that the entire nation can understand that reparations work. Residents will have to prove they experienced housing discrimination or they are direct descendants of a black person who experienced it to qualify for the program. Not necessarily in Wisconsin, but some people know that sad feeling of letting beer go down to waste. One German brewery is ensuring that doesn't happen. In Dusseldorf, they're giving unsold beer to local bakeries to bake into loaves of bread. It's a real win-win. Beer doesn't go down the drain and customers get a free bottle of craft beer with a loaf. A new partnership between SSM Health, Dean Health Plan, and Dane County Parks encourages spending time in nature. The Healthy Parks Healthy You partnership works to highlight the physical and mental health benefits of spending time in the Dane County Park system. During the pandemic, the amount of people spending time in Dane County Parks increased, and this partnership will want to keep the same usage up. A groom nearly spent his honeymoon in the doghouse after dropping his sweetheart's wedding ring into Lake Tahoe during their ceremony. You can see right here that during the ceremony, he fumbles and the ring is gone. Lucky for him, the stressful episode had a happy ending. A scuba diver put on his wetsuit and went searching for the ring. And then we start to move some of these little rocks out of the way. And as we start to move them, obviously some silt starts to form. So I get the, get the ring on this nail. Pull it aside. Don't drop the ring. Okay. <laughs> Luckily, Lake Tahoe, you can see through it clearly. The, he returned it to the couple. The couple says it's a story they won't soon forget. Looks like we'll dry it out late Sunday and Monday before yet another round of rain moves in by next Tuesday. So a very spring-like pattern, George. Rain, rain, go away, right? <laughs> Just get me to Monday when it's sunny again. That's what yeah, I want to Yeah, we got to take see. advantage of that for sure. We're looking forward to Friday, too. High school football kicks mm -hmm. off alternate fall. A lot of Dane County schools return to the gridiron. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Take a look at this. To celebrate the 40th anniversary of the first space shuttle flight, LEGO is creating a model of a Discovery shuttle and Hubble telescope. With more than 2,300 pieces and realistic details like a space arm and cockpit, it sure looks out of this world. And the Packers getting a little defensive today as they bring back a familiar face for bringing one back too. Jock goes in next with sports. At the Henry Vilas Zoo have emerged from hibernation. Ash and Lexi are out on exhibit and zookeepers say they are slowly waking up and will be quite sleepy for the next few weeks. They're also expected to lose much of the weight they've put on ahead of hibernation over the next month or so. That's awesome to see, isn't it, Dukes? Yeah, Ash, Lexi, I feel you, man. It's, it's hard to 
stay awake when we have all this rain and dreary conditions around. I was about to say, it's been feel today felt like yeah. it, and it's going to all week, it looks like, feel like hibernation weather. Uh, yeah, not going to be the brightest stretch of weather here. I and mean, we've been in and out of the rain this evening. We're going to be in and out of it for the remainder of the night. Temperatures, though, will be mild, so that's a plus. We're only down to the upper 40s for tomorrow morning. Another good chance of rain through midday, and then we'll start to clear it out Wednesday night and early Thursday. Another storm system Friday, and yet another storm system possible on Saturday. So you get the picture here. Uh, uh, not a lot of sunshine and a lot of rain chances. All right, Brian, thank you so much. And thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. We'll see you guys tomorrow.